Hi everybody, welcome to my extreme GoPro footage of the Synthesis Lab. One thing that's going to be a little bit different maybe is that this M-Audio Mobile Pre USB audio interface is usually on and that's okay. It's not a big deal. We can make connections with that on even though uh, quite often we would prefer to make connections with things turned off. This is not one of those super special USB interfaces. Um, something else to think about before we even plug anything else in, uh, as we've talked about before, it's great to double check that the phantom power is off. Now I can tell by looking at this that this little red light should be off, and it is, but nothing's connected to it, so if we really wanted to, we could even double check by punching it, turning it on. Oh, yep, see? The red light turns on. We don't want that on. I'll punch it again, and it turns it off. Um, as you would expect, all the volumes are zeroed out here and everything is turned off except for the computer and the audio interface. So one of the things that we want to do is make our connections right off the bat. Here is the DR5 drum machine and uh, in this case it still has the cable plugged in but we have a TRS cable, a balanced cable. It's going to go into the left parentheses mono output of the DR5 and it's going to go into a quarter inch in on the mobile pre here. Now the one on the face is broken. We can't use channel 1's quarter inch in. Channel 2's quarter inch in's on the back. You'll see right here it says uh, instrument slash line. We'll plug in there. And ta-da! All our connections are made because this has already been connected to the computer via USB and we're not plugging anything else in. So our connections are made. Now it's time to power things on. We start with the furthest thing away from the speakers, the DR5. And now I'm going to go turn the speakers on. They have power switches right next to where the uh, AC plug goes in on the back. And each speaker needs to be turned on individually. So I have my speakers on. I have my DR5 turned on. At this point, I could start turning up volumes, but you know what I really want is I want to see the uh, the meters on my DAW while I'm adjusting the volumes. So I'm going to go ahead and log in using my MSU credentials. And I'm going to open up Logic Pro. X down here, the little silver record looking thing. When it opens up, it will give me a row of menu options at the top of the screen. I'll say File, New, and it defaults to audio tracks. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and just say let's do one track for right now. We'll create one track. There it is, and then up here at the top I have this uh, little button that looks like it's got uh, faders, like a mixing board. That's my mixer button. If I click that, my mixing board shows up down here at the bottom. Now, one thing I might want to check, because we know we're in channel 2 on our mobile pre, is I'll come up here to the input on channel 1 and switch it from channel 1, input 1 to input 2. So now, channel 1 is working off of input 2 and that's where we're plugged in. I've got my channel highlighted right here which is perfect. That's going to let me see the monitoring of uh, audio. And now it's the time to turn things up volume wise. Our very first volume control is on the DR5 and this is our first gain stage. Now you might think it's no big deal but it's actually super important to get this thing set at a good point because it can really jack with the sound if you don't have this set uh, at a place where everything is happy. Now just guessing I'm going to throw it all the way up to 100% and then pull it back just a little bit and I'm going to guess that that is somewhere around 75-80%. That's usually a good place to start uh, and a lot of times we do have to guess when we're first starting out. Now I'm going to come over here to gain stage 2. That's the input for channel 2. 
on the audio interface. Now as I turn this up, I see that I have uh, a meter starting to read very low, but still there's something there. Since the DR5 is not playing, I have to assume that that is noise. That is just hum from the DR5. And so if I come and actually click my little I button, which stands for input monitoring on channel one here, that's going to pass the audio through the computer to the speakers and I can actually hear what's connected. And sure enough, there is kind of a bassy hum there. That's important for me to think about because maybe uh, it's going to be a problem and maybe I can do something about it. For right now, it's time just to hit start on the drum machine and play our default song number four. If I look over here at channel two, I can see that uh, it's barely registering on the signal input for my mobile pre audio interface. I'll turn it up a little bit more. Now it's got a little bit better signal and if I look at my meter, it's peaking at about negative 15 dB. We said negative 10 is a good place to shoot for and that's true but there's nothing wrong with negative 15 either. Now negative 20 is probably a little too low for a peak, but I'm happy with negative 15. I'm gonna hit stop, still hear that nasty hum. So one of the things I wanna try is to play around with the input, uh, excuse me, play around with the volume of the DR5. Just put it in some different places and see if it helps or hurts the ratio between the noise of the DR5 that's just constant versus the actual drum samples that we want. Well, I definitely don't want to go low because as I lower it, the noise stays the same, but I'm decreasing the drum samples. That means it's going to be horribly noisy, terrible. So I'm going to go the other direction. I feel like between 75% and 100%, uh, there's no increase in hum, but there is an increase in the sample um, presence. So I'm gonna leave the DR5 at 100% volume. It's not great, but it's the best we're gonna get in um, uh, as far as the signal to noise ratio goes. Still gonna be noisy, but nowhere near as noisy as it would have been at like 25%. All right. It's time to save this because before we record, we want to go ahead and give it a location to record to. I'm going to say File, Save As, and um, I've got a Documents folder here that I've titled Exercise 1. I'm going to go ahead and save it in Exercise 1. And at this point, right next to my little I button, which was my input monitoring, there's an R button for record enable. Once that little R button is clicked, it's flashing red, we're ready to record. I do happen to remember that the drum machine song 104 is at 109 BPM, so I'll change logic to match that. And I'll turn my metronome on. Now it's time to hit record, and we're gonna go ahead and just get this thing uh, laid down for maybe 20 seconds or so. Okay, now I can de-click my record button, de-click my input monitoring, and I'll zoom in using these little controls to the top right corner so I can see things a little better. Turn my metronome off, now I'm just listening to the drum machine. So we did it. We recorded a machine and we even tried to improve the sound quality, which is something that you really 
have to take into account at the very beginning of every source you record because any mistakes here uh, will just amplify the suckage, the bad sound later on. And you'll probably forget later on that um, this is even going to be something that could have originated back here at the very first gain stage. You might spend way too much time trying to fix it with EQ and effects and whatever when really you just had your settings wrong at the very beginning. Uh, I've heard this happen so many times and um, it absolutely is uh, something that you can avoid and you must avoid if you're going to be a, a professional engineer. So now it's time to file save and uh, you know we're going to talk more about what we can do with this later on but that's really all there is to exercise one. So let's close this out and now we're going to kind of reverse what we've done before by turning all our volumes down and then switching off the speakers first switching off the drum machine next and unplugging the cable good luck